How did we end the French and Indian War? Treaty of Paris. 1763. Uh, how are we going to end the American Revolutionary War? Treaty of Paris. 1783. Uh, I'm telling you, one day you need to go Google Treaty of Paris. There's a bazillion of them. We care about two this year. One that ends the French and Indian War, Treaty of Paris 1763, and one, the one we're reading about today, the Treaty of Paris 1783. Okay, so this ended the Revolutionary War. It was signed September 3rd, 1783. The Peace of Paris 1783 was a collection of treaties and it concluded, it ended the American Revolution, and it was signed by representatives of Great Britain on one side, and the United States, France, and Spain on the other. So you had the United States, France, and Spain joined together, and they were uh, on opposing sides from the British. Preliminary articles, uh, preliminary means it early came out the, the beginning stuff. These are often called the Preliminary Treaties of Paris, were signed at Paris between Britain and the United States on November 30th, 1782. This would be more of a, look, we're going to sign something a little bit more final later, but for right now, war is generally over. Uh, on September 3rd, 1783, three definitive treaties were signed. Three, hmm, this is real deal stuff. This is definitive. These were signed between Britain and the United States in Paris, the capital of France. Uh, that's why it's called the Treaty of Paris, because <laughs> that's why it was signed there. Um, and it was also signed between Britain, France, and Spain, respectively, at Versailles. Versailles is the, uh, is the palace of the French king. That's where the king of France lives, or lived. He's, there's no king of France today. The Netherlands and Britain also signed a preliminary treaty on September 2nd, 1783, and a final separate peace on May 20th, 1784. By the terms of the U.S.-British Treaty, Britain recognized the independence of the United States with generous boundaries all the way to the Mississippi River. However, England kept Canada. They retained. They kept Canada. Access to the Newfoundland fisheries was guaranteed to America's uh, so that way we could still go up to Canada and we could still fish. We could still participate in that part of the economy. So our, our fishermen in the north would still be able to go do their jobs. So their lives wouldn't change. Uh, and navigation of the Mississippi was to be open to both Great Britain and the United States. So we get all the land out to the Mississippi, but we have to let the British keep using it. We get to use it, but so do they. Creditors of neither country were to be impeded on the collection of their debts, and Congress was to be recommended to the states that American loyalists would be treated fairly and their confiscated property would be restored. Uh, so anybody who had shown loyalty to England, England said, okay, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna have peace, those that showed us loyalty, we do not wanna see you treating them, them badly. And we agreed to that. Um, there were also some provisions, some stipulations, some rules uh, that were to cause later difficulties and disputes that we will have to come and settle later. To France, Britain surrendered Tobago and Senegal. Spain got to keep Menorca and East and West Florida. So America still doesn't own Florida. Spain has it. And that's, that's why Spain was our ally. Spain also declared war on England to help us, but unlike the French, they were too weak. They could not come physically help us. But because they declared war on England, England had to go down to Florida to fight. And those were troops that were fighting the Spanish that if Spain hadn't declared war would have been fighting against us. So the Spanish had helped by pulling British troops somewhere else. The Netherlands came off pretty poorly. They didn't get a great, uh, great deal here. They had to cede. They had to give up the port city of Nagapattingham to India and in India to uh, Britain. 
and allowing the British free navigation rights in the Dutch-held Moluccas. Blah, 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 blah. The only thing you really got to know about this is that the United States is recognized by Great Britain as a country. So our mother country is saying, we are no longer your mother country. You're no longer a colony. You are your own country. And that's huge. Uh, we get a huge amount of new land. If you look above me, you see all that green? That's a lot more land than we had uh, than when we were the 13 colonies. That's the Appalachian Mountains all the way out to the Mississippi. That's way more land that's actually in than, than is actually in England itself. Like that's a huge country. We even get bigger later on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, now this is this is this part down here. I just I just love this. This is hilarious. Uh, this painting is a very famous painting, and it's not finished. Why is it not finished? Did the painter just get lazy? Like, what's going on here? Why is the painting not finished? So the United States delegation, so the people that we sent uh, to sign the Treaty of Paris, included John Jay, John Adams, and Ben Franklin, and Henry Lawrence, and William Temple Franklin. So that's them. Uh, those are the people we sent and said, you will represent us. If you sign this treaty, then we're in it. Uh, here, our delegates are depicted by Benjamin West. Benjamin West painted this in his 1783 American Commissioners of Preliminary Peace Agreement with Great Britain. That's, that's what he named. That's what he named his painting. Isn't that just so clever? He named his painting the 1783 American Commissioners of the Preliminary Peace Agreement with Great Britain. He's so clever. Is my dry sarcasm getting across? However, the British delegation should have been sitting over here. Why aren't they there? They refused to pose. They were so embarrassed that they had lost the war they wouldn't even sit down for a painting. I hope you're enjoying this, and I hope that you are thrilled to find out that the American Revolutionary War is over and the United States has been born. We are a country. I hope that you're learning, and I hope that you're having a little bit of fun.